Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do um, a small watercolour study. Uh, this is one I did originally last year um, near Belle Isle Castle near Enniskillen in Northern Ireland. Uh, that was done on the 26th of May 1919 um, and I've got my watercolour paper here. This is a, a rough paper compared with the smooth cartridge paper I used on this one. This was done on site. Uh, so I'm just going to use that as reference. My painting today won't be exactly the same as that. I'm not necessarily um, wanting to copy it exactly, but just use it as reference. So I've got my drawing. I did my drawing with um, a B pencil, um, background trees and the fields and the foreground here, main tree on the left. And I've got my colours all laid out on my palette. Uh, here we've got burnt sienna. This is um, cadmium red light or cadmium red pale, which is just slightly orange or slightly paler than ordinary cadmium red. Similar to viridian, uh, sorry, similar to vermilion, um, uh, as it's uh, an orangey red. Cadmium yellow here, and um, Hansa yellow there, or Hansa yellow light, or lemon yellow. Uh, not, I hasten to add. Um, lemon yellow nickel titanate uh, which has a lot of um, uh, it's an opaque color it's a much paler uh, color it's got a lot of filler in it and uh, so I wouldn't use uh, lemon yellow nickel titanate but just lemon yellow or Hansa yellow or Hansa yellow lights here is ultramarine this one is called phthalo blue or phthalo cyanine blue Winsor and Newton in the artist range call it Windsor blue um, they have Windsor Blue Red Shade and Windsor Blue Green Shade, uh, either of those would do, but the, the nearest equivalent uh, to Thalo Cyanine Blue or Thalo Blue is the Windsor Blue Green Shade. Um, SAA call it Tropical Thalo Blue and in the student range Windsor & Newton call it Intense Blue, um, it's exactly the same. And here um, you could use either uh, this one or this one. This is a green. This is um, Thalo Green. Uh, Winsor Newton call it Windsor Green. It's very similar to Viridian, but a little bit darker. It's a very, very synthetic green. But when you mix it with other colours, it gives you wonderful uh, natural looking greens. On its own, very dodgy. But mixed with other colours like oranges and browns, it gives you lovely natural greens. Uh, so I can either use that or the uh, the phthalo blue. Uh, so first of all, I want to mix a colour for the sky. Uh, and I've got a little bit of practice paper here, just a bit of um, watercolour paper to test the colours out on. I find that very helpful uh, because the colours in your palette can look a lot stronger than when you put them on the paper. So it's, I always think it's a good idea just to test them first of all. So <clears throat> the, the blue for my sky, I've got some ultramarine, a couple of drops of water. Ultramarine, sometimes called French ultramarine. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit of phthalo blue to it. Uh, which makes it like cobalt blue. And then I want um, a shadow uh, colour. Colour for the, um, the clouds. Uh, shadow on the clouds, just get rid of some of that water. Just take a brush full of that. <coughs> Maybe a touch more ultramarine. And then just add a tiny amount of the cadmium red light or cadmium red pale put too much in it'll go brown but a little bit you can see it just grays it nicely makes it into a, uh, a purpley gray blue gray well I'll test these colors now on a little bit of paper and when you test them just use a small brush then you don't use up all your paint I'm going to do this sky on dry paper so I'm going to test the, the colors on dry paper if I was doing a wet in wet sky then I'd uh, wet the paper first and drop the colours in, then I test the colours on wet paper as well because the water on the paper would dilute the colours. So wherever I don't paint is going to be my cloud, if you like. So I just make a bit of a cloud shape like that. And 
if I don't soften the edges, then those clouds have got hard edges to them, which is fine. I don't mind that. If you wanted to soften the edges, you could just tickle it around with a damp brush. But I'm not too bothered about, about that. So I'm quite happy to have hard edged clouds for this picture. And then lower down, I'm going to put some of the, the grey. And then carry on with a little bit more blue at the bottom. And I'm quite happy with those colours. I think those... Uh, the blue and the, the grey are fine for that. And so right at the bottom, I'll just make it a little bit paler. So that's the kind of thing I'm hoping to do on my main sky. I've got plenty of colour left, so I'm ready to go. I'm going to use um, uh, a size 10 brush, I think, to do this. I'd say the bigger the brush, the quicker you can do it. Make sure your brush is clean. Bash it in the water. Get rid of uh, the excess onto some kitchen roll. It doesn't matter if I go over my tree because the, the tree is going to be um, darker anyway. But I just need to have in my mind's eye where these clouds are going to go. Just bring them down a little bit on the, the left, I think. Maybe just a little bit of softening here and there. And then without touching the blue, wet the inside of the clouds and brush in some of the blue of the grey. Keeping the tops of the clouds white. And then carry on with a bit more blue, maybe not quite as strong at the bottom. Just soften any of those grey upper edges with a damp brush. A little bit more blue and then leave a few little bits of streaky white for other clouds. So that's, that's my sky. Quite happy with that. Just make it a bit paler towards the horizon because... Um, Blue skies are always stronger higher up and paler blue on, towards the horizon. Got trees going in there. So that's okay. I just need to let that dry now. And um, then I can, so while that's drying, I can be mixing some colours for the, the grasses, the, the fields and the trees uh, above. So I've got plenty of my ultramarine left. I can use some of that. Um, I, I'll still and I'll use some of that grey as well. Just mix a little bit more of that grey. That was mostly ultramarine with a touch of the cadmium red. And this blue I don't need it anymore, so I'm going to just add some um, uh, cadmium yellow to that, which will give me a subdued green. So I can use some of that. I'll take a, a brush full of that and uh, just make it a bit paler by adding some more yellow to it. And wash the brush. Mix another one with just lemon yellow. I can drop some of that into my greens. And I'm going to use uh, some of the Viridian now you can see that's a really shocking green, but when you add burnt sienna to it, you get wonderful, wonderful dark greens like olive green. So I take a bit of that yellow and lighten it a bit. That's a beautiful green. Now there's no evidence of the viridian of the um, viridian in that. I'll mix another one with more viridian and a touch of the phthalo blue and plenty of burnt sienna that will give me a really dark dark green I think I might just make this a touch yellower The, 
this a touch bluer. Just make sure that the picture is dry with the hairdryer. <coughs> and using a small to medium sized brush like um, a four, five or a six, uh, these trees in the background, doesn't really matter which of these colours I start with, uh, just leaving bits of white here and there. And then going back to the palette and using a slightly different colour. And let some of these colours mingle a little bit to start with. Perhaps a little bit more cadmium yellow. And uh, grow some of these trees up a bit. Just leaving little bits of uh, white for later on and I'll, I'll fill those in a bit with other colours and I'll, I'll darken that in a little while too. Just on the horizon, some very pale bluey grey, suggestion of background hills or background trees. <clears throat> I'll sort all these trees out later on with some <clears throat> more darks. Starting lights and building it up as I go along. And then when that's dried, I can paint the fields. So I can use some of the tree colours. Maybe just make this green a little bit brighter with some more uh, yellow, cadmium yellow and a little bit of the lemon yellow or Hansi yellow. I'll just dry that now. Um, I always think with watercolour it's safer to underdo the colour, uh, it's always easier to add more uh, later than try and take, take paint off. So very yellowish greens to sort of accentuate the uh, sunlight. And I'll just let these colours merge to begin with and then separate the fields once this is dried. And if you don't have too much paint on your brush on a rough paper, as you drag it, as you run out of paint and you drag it across the surface of the paper, you get a hit and miss effect. You might just be able to see some of the white um, of the paper appearing here as I drag the brush across the surface of the paper. And uh, you can use that. That might hopefully look like 
flowers, white flowers in the field. So I'll come back to those later on, nice and light and bright and sunny to start with. I'll come back to those trees in a little while. I just want to get the rest of this uh, white paper filled in. <coughs> And um, using, a, I think this is a size 8 brush, um, using any of the greens, not having too much paint on my brush to start with. On the rough paper, if you drag the brush a little bit, drag it downwards, you get this hit and miss effect. You can also use the tip of the brush. These are overhanging leaves uh, from trees that are out of the picture. If your brush is too wet, then you get a solid blob. But if it's damp, you get a hit and miss effect, which is great for this kind of thing. <clears throat> I'm going to put some dark green over the, uh, the tree here anyway, because uh, this has got ivy growing up it. And um, later on, when I darken it, that green will look a lot more striking perhaps than it looks now. But it will all come together bit by bit. So starting light and then bringing in, coming around the side here, there's trees, branches coming into the picture with leaves hanging over using the tip of the brush as well as what I call splodging, touching a damp brush on here and there. There's other brushes you can use for this uh, as well. Some brushes make some techniques easier than others. Vary the colour a bit, perhaps a bit more yellow amongst this. And all kinds of things growing in the foreground here. So this is a sort of framing our view across the fields. And I'm going to leave little bits of um, white as well for hopefully what will look like cow parsley eventually. Keeping my brush strokes slightly flattish, slightly elong uh, elongated vary the colour, can drop in some of the darker greens as well and some of the greys uh, can go over some of those bit by bit just getting this kind of filled in really and then once all this is dried then I'll Come back to it in the second part of this painting, darkening it and putting in more detail. So the first stage uh, is just getting the white of the paper uh, covered, mostly. That blue-grey should help to look like shadows as well. That was ultramarine, not too much cadmium red or cadmium red lights so that'll give you a, a nice bluey grey bluish grey violet grey <clears throat> I tend to use um, the same um, colours whatever make uh, of paints I use um, I tend to stick with the same pretty much the same colours from most things I have a very few um, limited range of colours because I think that too many colours can be too confusing and I can mix anything I want just from a handful of uh, colours. And always a good idea to mix plenty of colour so you don't run out part of the way through something. So that's just the, the first stage. And then once all this is dried, then I can start darkening bit by bit. So I'll, I think I'll leave all that for now. And I'll see you all in part two shortly.